So you spend some of your hard earned money on a new PC. You got it shipped, you bring it home and you hook it up. Next thing you know, one of three things typically happen. It works great, it's dead, or maybe it's slow or laggy when you use it. But is there a solution? Results may vary with different systems and configurations. Don't Bruh. me if it doesn't work for you. Here's some of the specs for this PC build. An Intel Core i9 13900K processor, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR5-6400 in a 2x16 configuration using an XMP1 profile, an ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Hero motherboard. First, run a clean install of Windows 10 22H2 or Windows 11 23H2. You can get it by searching for Media Creation Tool on Google and running the app. Simply follow the instructions on the app and you'll be good to go. If you want me to make a video on how to do this, let me know in the comments. 2. After installing Windows 10 22H2 or Windows 11 23H2, install all the appropriate drivers for your PC. 3. Install the latest Windows patch from Windows Update. 4. Create a System Restore Backup. Go to Search and type Create a Restore Point and open it. At the bottom, click on Create. 5. Windows Defender Scanning Exclusions This will instruct Windows Defender to not scan for NVIDIA cache folders, logs, user registry files. I'll include a link in the description. Simply open PowerShell as an administrator and paste the command lines. You may need to press Enter to get the last entry in. If you wish to undo the exclusions, simply copy and paste the exclusion section into PowerShell and press Enter. 6. Disable Virtualization Based Security or VBS Search for Windows Security, go to Device Security, in the Core Isolation section, click on Core Isolation Details. Turn off Memory Integrity and reboot your PC. If you wish to undo this, simply go back in and re-enable Memory Integrity. Nothing major has changed so far, but that's about the change. Let's go into the BIOS. If you're completely computer literate, don't make any changes. Consider this as educational, and if you want to make changes, talk to someone who is tech savvy first. Remember, you are responsible for any changes made. This is a critical part of the video. As of this recording, this is the latest BIOS from ASUS, version 18.01. I went ahead and updated the Intel ME firmware as a test, but it had no effect on the end result. First thing, let's take a backup of the current BIOS settings. Go to Tools and scroll down to Profile Setting. Under Profile Name, give the profile a name, something you will remember. Save to an unassigned profile. Choose Yes when prompted to save. Since I made a backup already, I don't need to do this. Go to Exit and choose Load Optimized Defaults. Click OK when prompted. Go to the Extreme Tweaker section. Under AI Overclock Tuner, change this to XMP1. For the purpose of this test, only choose XMP1. If it's successful, then modify custom memory timers as you see fit. Change ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled, remove all limits 90 degrees Celsius. Set SVID behavior to typical scenario. Scroll down to Digi Plus VRM. Set the sync ACDC load line with VRM load line to Enabled. Go back and go to the Advanced section. Go to CPU Configuration. Scroll down to CPU Power Management Control and open it. Change Intel Speed Step to Disabled. Change Intel Speed Shift Technology to Disabled. Change CPU States to Enabled. In Enhanced C States, change this to Disabled. Under Package C State Limit, we're going to change this to C6. If you use C0, C1, your max CPU speed will end up as 4.5 GHz, and E cores will be used instead of P cores for single threaded tasks. On another note, I later discovered C state had an effect on power usage. The higher the C state, the more power used. This will be shown with Cinebench testing. Go back a couple levels to the main advanced section. Go to Platform Miscellaneous Configuration. We're going to disable the power management sections so that more control is left to the BIOS instead of the operating system. 
under native ASPM, change it to disabled. Set PCI Express native power management to disabled. In the PCH PCI Express section, set ASPM to disabled. Scroll down to PCI Express clock gating and change it to disabled. Go back to advanced and go to system agent SA configuration. Go to graphics configuration. If you have a dedicated graphics card, change it from auto to peg slot. Otherwise, leave it on auto. Go back to advanced and go to USB configuration. If you don't use old USB hardware, boot to another OS or CSM, disable legacy USB support. Go back to advanced and go to onboard devices configuration. If you don't use the onboard audio, disable USB audio. Disable USB power delivery in a soft state. If you like the RGB light bling, leave the LED lightning as is. Otherwise, change the line when system is in a working state to aura off. Go to tools, Asus Armory Crate, and disable it. The, A the My Asus section should already be disabled. Go to the boot section, go to boot configuration, disable fast boot. Set POS delay time to one second. Next, go to search at the top. Search for PMIC. That's Papa, Mike, India, Charlie. Change PMIC voltages to auto. Make any other changes that are unique to your system. And once you've done that, go to save changes and reset. We're going to run Cinebench 2024. Make sure you run Cinebench 2024 or any benchmark with Windows Defender disabled. If you leave it enabled, Windows Defender will scan the benchmark app and can cause lower results or can cause the app to crash. As you can see, multi-core is generally not exceeding 90 degrees Celsius and ends with a score of 2255. HWinfo 64 had an average of 288 watts. With single core, it's nowhere near 90 degrees and averages around 68 degrees Celsius. It looks like an average of 62 watts was used. After testing this for a few weeks, this PC is more responsive in Windows 10 and 11. I can run games, render videos in DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere in 4K without any problems. Office apps work fine. So far it's good for everyday use, but there's a couple additional benefits with these changes. First, the maximum CPU power is about 288 watts. In previous testing with Cinebench, or other benchmarking apps for that matter, the power consumption ranged from 350 to 380 watts. Because of the lower C states and watts used, Temperatures are much cooler. With all C states on on or automatic, more watts are used. This is where it gets more technical. It's to the point where I don't understand the behavior behind the increased power consumption. In a 288 watt configuration, perhaps you could get away with an air cooler again. I don't have one, but it would be interesting to know as this can save some cash on a PC build. Secondly, somehow with these changes, I'm getting an average of three to 5% higher than an average benchmark test. If I use the default C states, I get the average. This configuration from start to finish can be replicated on my MSI ACE C790 motherboard with a different 13900K. I'll make another video and go through those BIOS settings in the future, but for now, the responsiveness is better, but this causes other questions. Perhaps some people can provide clarity. Anyway, that's it for now. If you find this video useful or educational, consider giving it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'll try to keep a weekly schedule as time permits, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.